I've been using this M4 iPad Pro as my only computer for over 300 days. I bought it back in May of 2024 when it first came out, and so I'm about three weeks shy of a year of using this as my only device for work. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and maybe you've asked yourself the question of whether or not the iPad Pro can serve as your only computer for actually getting real work done in real life. I asked myself that same question a year ago. My Mac at the time was getting really old. I wanted to trade it in and get something new, and I really wanted to get a device that could just meet all my needs in one package. So if you're wondering what I do, I have a few different jobs. First of all, I am a project manager during the day. That's my full-time position, and so I take my iPad Pro into the office every day and do all the office things that everyone would expect you do in a cubicle. So I have to use Microsoft Word every day to edit contracts and review those scopes of work. I have to use PowerPoint to develop presentations and training slide decks for team members. I have to access Smartsheet on the web so that I can manage my project schedules. All of the real world things that you would do on a normal computer. In addition, I am also a teacher at night, so I teach adult education to students that are trying to earn a GED and so I use my iPad to teach all subject matters. I teach language arts, math, science, and social studies. So in this video, I want to give you an honest review about how this experience has gone for me. Can you really replace your desktop computer or a laptop with an iPad Pro and actually get your job done? And also, it's not just about can you do it, but can you have a good experience doing it? So I wanna talk about the following things. I wanna talk about office productivity on the iPad Pro, and I don't just mean Microsoft, Microsoft Office, I just mean doing any kind of general office work. I want to talk about my experience in teaching with the iPad Pro. And then the meat of the video is, would I recommend this, yes or no, why or why not, or what user base is this really good for? All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about productivity. And no one has more questions about productivity on iPad than using Microsoft Office. That is, by and large, the biggest software package that everyone uses for regular productivity work. And so I've been using these apps for a while, and not just Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but also Outlook and Teams on the iPad Pro. And the apps are pretty darn good in my opinion. Are they perfect? No. Are they desktop level? Oh, it's so close. So obviously the apps are laid out very different. They don't look like desktop apps. You have to retrain yourself on where things are within the applications. And a lot of times that's enough to deter people right there. They don't want to go hunting around the application to find out how to insert a table or change font size, things like that. But they are just a little bit short of that desktop level. So they were designed for touch. And so sometimes when you use the mouse on your iPad Pro or a trackpad, things just act a little funky when you click. They seem to work better when you actually use the touchscreen and use your finger, but who really wants to do that, especially if you're using a secondary display, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. There are a few functions missing from these applications as well. For example, there are no macros in Microsoft Excel for the iPad Pro, and so that nixes it right there for some users. I've got some content on how I use Microsoft Office. I'll link those videos in the description below. Now, a lot of folks have to access their work applications through the browser, and so the Safari browser on iPad Pro, especially on the 13-inch model is pretty darn good. It's way better than it was years ago. Leaps and bounds better. And so things like Google Docs tend to work pretty darn well on the browser. Again, though, it's just a little bit short of the desktop version. So for example, when you load Google Drive, everything's sort of zoomed in and you can't unzoom in. But if you resize the window using Stage Manager, then everything looks okay. I'm not sure why it does that. It's just those little quirky things about the iPad Pro that are different from a desktop version. Safari also also works a little weird for Smartsheet, and that application is really important to me. And so Safari on the iPad has that swipe left to go back feature. So if you try to go left on a spreadsheet in Smartsheet, it's like hitting the back button on the browser. So that screws up everything, especially when I'm in the middle of a meeting and I'm sharing my screen and do that. That causes real problems. So I've had to do a workaround where I use the arrow keys, but a lot of folks don't want to mess with workarounds like that. They just want things to work properly. So Apple, can you hear me? Please turn off that swipe left to go back thing. Give us a feature where we can turn that off in the Safari browser. And you might say, well, just use the apps. Well, some apps are absolutely terrible. Like the Google Suite apps are just no good. The browser version works way better. The applications, again, are designed for touch. Once the iPad got compatibility for using a mouse or trackpad, I don't think Google went in and really updated their applications to make that work well. So you still have to use touch quite a bit in those applications. That doesn't really speed things up for productivity. And the Smartsheet 
Suite app is just awful. They have not updated that at all to work like a desktop version. There's not a lot you can do. Keyboard shortcuts don't work. Copying, pasting large amounts of text in cells doesn't work. It's just not great. So I stick with the browser version of those applications and I have a much better experience. Again, not desktop level experience, but pretty darn close. File management can be another pain point if you don't know what you're doing. So the Files app has come a long way and is very similar to Finder on a Mac, but just doesn't work quite as well. For example, when I install Microsoft OneDrive, the app, you can see it in the Files app, but when you try to drag and drop or access things, it just doesn't work right. You get a lot of error messages. So I use the Microsoft OneDrive app to access my files, but you can't drag and drop within that application. You can't open multiple instances of it. So again, there's just a few shortcomings in the iPad versions of these things that you just don't experience on a desktop. Again, I found workarounds. It works okay. I can get to my files. I can get to shared drives. I can open documents, edit them, save them back to the cloud. All that works great. It's just those little nuances that kind of get under your skin. Now, let's talk about using secondary displays. So Apple has released Stage Manager. They came out with this a few years ago. So now you can connect your iPad to a secondary display, which is critical for productivity. But again, there are some shortcomings. You can only connect to one display as opposed to two or three or four with a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. And one of the weirdest things that you can't do is you can't share your screen of your secondary display when you're leading a Zoom meeting or Teams meeting. And as a project manager, that's pretty darn critical. I need to be able to share my secondary display and swap windows around. That's just a very common thing you can do on a desktop. So on the iPad, you can only share the iPad screen. Again, Apple, can you fix this? Can you build this into iPad OS 19 so we can share either display? I think that's pretty darn important for Apple to fix that if they're going to have people take the iPad Pro seriously in productivity. All right, so we've talked a little bit about my productivity experience in project management. Let's talk about the iPad Pro in teaching, which is a completely different occupation. The iPad Pro is king at teaching. It is way better than a Mac. I love the experience I have with my iPad Pro and teaching. And the main reason is because of Apple Pencil. So the Apple Pencil turns my iPad Pro into a portable whiteboard. It's just awesome. And it's great for teaching things like math where you just can't pull that up in a Word doc and teach that easily. Not on a Mac, but you can on an iPad Pro. In fact, you can write on your PowerPoint presentations that you've created, do the math problems right within the slide deck. It's really awesome. The iPad Pro form factor just works well for teaching. So it's portable. I can carry it around from student to student. I can show them how to work out a problem right beside them and then go back up to the front of the room and start casting on the board and demonstrate to the whole class. Something else that the iPad Pro has over the MacBook for teaching is it's got that camera built in so it's a portable scanner. And scanning in documents, PDFs, students' homework assignments, all are very important and make my teaching workflow just so easy and comfortable. So I can scan in documents quickly. I can share them with students digitally. I pretty much made my whole classroom paperless. I don't use paper. So I really have no pain points with teaching on the iPad Pro. I love it. It is great for that. It is better than a Mac in that way. Okay, so let's talk about if I would recommend using an iPad Pro for your work over using a traditional computer like a Mac or a PC. Well, I have to pose some questions for you in order to answer that. The first question I would ask you is, are you looking for a two-in-one device? So if you were like me, I just wanted to get one device to do everything. I really needed a new iPad and a new MacBook at the time, but didn't want to spend the money on both of those things. So I wanted an iPad for consumption. I really wanted something that was really nice for watching Netflix, Disney+, Plus, scrolling through the web at home, that sort of stuff. And I also wanted something where I could use in teaching, and the iPad excels at all of those things. But I also also needed something to do productivity. So if you're in the market for a device that can do both, the iPad Pro might be right for you. But let's ask a few more questions here. The next question I would ask you is, does your work require specific software? So not all softwares are available on the iPad Pro. Some folks have softwares that just don't run on it, like IBM's SPSS, for example. You can't get that on the iPad Pro. So if that's part of your workflow, this device isn't going to work for you. And even if the iPad Pro has the software or it works 
works on the mobile browser, it may not work perfectly like Smartsheet or even the Microsoft apps might be missing the features that you need. So you really need to make sure that the softwares you use regularly work and flow very well on the iPad. The next question I would ask you is, do you have the patience to retrain yourself on iPad OS? It is a very different operating system from Mac OS or from Windows for sure. And so the first 30 days of me doing this transition to iPad Pro for all my work was actually pretty painful. I had to get used to working on just one monitor plus the iPad screen. I had to get used to just sharing the iPad screen when I led a Teams meeting. I had to get used to the quirkiness of the file management system and the differences there and how I accessed my shared files and files that are in the cloud for my organization. A lot of people don't want to make a change because they don't like change and they don't have the time to retrain themselves on something new. So you have to consider that if you're going to make this switch. The next question I would ask you is can you live with the productivity shortcomings? Can you live with just having one monitor? Can you live with only being able to share the iPad screen? Can you live with PowerPoint and having to touch it sometimes on the touch screen and the mouse functionality not working quite perfectly or the browser being just short of a desktop version, just missing a few key features? If those are going to get on your nerves and you're not going to be able to overlook those things, the iPad Pro may not be for you. And the final question I would ask is, do you need the Apple Pencil for your job? That was the big deal for me. Not only could I get some productivity out of it, but I could get the pencil feature where I can do my teaching so well. If you don't have any use for the Apple Pencil in your work, this device may not be right for you because you're going to pay an awful lot of money for the iPad Pro and it gives you that writing and drawing capability. But if you don't need that, you can likely get a cheaper device like a MacBook Air that doesn't offer that sort of ability, but you don't really need it. Okay, so that's my rundown on the iPad Pro and these hundreds of days that I've used it as my only device. I hope it helps you make a good decision if you're considering using the iPad Pro as your only computer. Again, it's worked okay for me. I've really enjoyed this experience. I'm going to have more content out about the iPad Pro and how I'm going to continue to use it moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you like this sort of stuff, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.